Hey guys, welcome to Nine Links. This is your host Alex. Just give you another update on my basement greenhouse. Well, not really a greenhouse, but semi greenhouse. As you can see, the uh, first one we're gonna start off over here is the uh, night blooming jasmine. As you can see, uh, well, earlier I was down here sweeping up the leaves and taking off the yellow leaves. There's nothing major changed besides the leaves still falling off. Um, in terms of the plant health, is doing great and I don't water as often. And so night blooming jasmine is doing great. So we'll check over here for um, banana shrub. Banana shrub is doing well as well. Uh, as well, as you can see, there are no more flowers compared to last time when I show it, it's still a few more flowers. And it only has these little stems left. So we can uh, take care of it uh, or just leave it as it is. It will take care of itself. It will dry it and it will fall off on its own. And then we have uh, the cutting. Night blooming jasmine, you can see the yellow turning uh, yellow and it will drop off. And it's and the, in terms of the growth, you can see it's getting a little uh, lengthy. And uh, I told you before, uh, when they reach for uh, when the plant reach for light, they they tend to grow the segment out really long to reach for the light. But it's not a big problem. Eventually, I will cut them out. But right now, I'll just leave it as it is. And then we have a look over here. We have the uh, orange jasmine. Orange jasmine is doing well too. And it bloomed a little bit down here, not much. And as you can see right here, the uh, seeds are start to form again. And this time I'm gonna just wait till it gets really red. And if some people want it, I can just send it to them. But uh, like I say, I don't know how, how well it works. I never. Um, grow a orange jasmine from a seed. I bought this plant uh, about, I think in the four gallon pot, oh, so, okay. Anyway, it's doing great too. And so far, the funny thing about orange jasmine is that all its leaves are not dropping. It's been the same. And besides last time I did a little pruning on the flowers, it's still growing out some new new leaves. You see the uh, light green leaves usually indication of new leaves, okay. And then we move over here to the uh, Symbidian uh, Ruby Chan. Ever since I cut off the flower uh, flower stalks and repot it into a new pot, I only water it once so far. So it's still getting adjusted to the pot and it's doing great. As you can see, it's, these leaves turning yellow is normal. It has so many leaves there, it will get rid of some of them, but uh, that's normal. When you see um, Sambidian like a lot of leaves are turning yellow or turning black then that's there's a, some some problem with it and maybe that didn't like the repotting or something but when you generally see during the winter time you know one or two leaves turning yellow dropping off it's normal okay so this one is good too so now we come over here to uh, jasmine made of New Orleans this one's been a little crazy here's the why here's the reason why <laughs> as you can see it probably needs some watering right now. You can see the leaves are wilting. Uh, wilting. It's just doing great. Once I water it, it'll do doing very well. But I'm going probably gonna prune it a little bit. As you can see, it's going everywhere. It's trying to reach for a light. You can see I did not do that. They did it. Uh, the plant did it itself. Reach for the light to the windows. And so if you can see, let me move the white champaga back a little bit. If as you can see, the, the branches are, are everywhere. Is trying to grab onto something and um, try to reach for a light. I'll probably cut them, cut some of them off, and um, so give them uh, more water and this still for watering. So it's overall it's doing great and has a you know flower blooms and flower wilt and it's it's all good. And for white champaga, I just cleaned up the leaves earlier. It as you can see, if you were paying close attention to last time compared to this time you will definitely notice the leaves are a lot less. It will continue to drop its leaves. It will turn yellow. Oh, there's one actually. I missed that one earlier. Just touch it. Oh, no, not yet. So if some of the leaves, you can tell it's still yellow and you touch it, slight touch, it falls off like this one. So it's, it's time. To, um, what I do with the leaves is I collect them, I cut them, and I use it as a mulch later on. But as you can see, it's still flowering down here. The fragrance, it's very, very minimal. So you can't really smell anything um, unless you get put your nose right close to it. The uh, most leaves fall 
mostly fall off on the this side, the one away from the light. So the plant is actually pretty smart. You know, the way over here, this still pretty big cluster right here, it does not do anything. And over there, you see slight few leaves falling off, but over back here, down below, behind the light, falls off a lot. But so basically the, the plant itself is very healthy and I inspect them every week to see if any bugs and stuff. So far, I don't see anything major. And for like this one, it's nothing to be worried about. You can just cut it off. It, it's about to fall off anyway, just take it off. And so overall, as you can see, the plant's very healthy. All right, let's, now let's move to the next room. All right, over here, we have the uh, figs. As you can see, the figs, when I move them down here, I took all the leaf off on this one. Uh, this one was outside, if you remember correctly. I moved this one in a lot later because I thought just let it freeze outside and start over next year. But then I saw how big this size is. It's kind of waste to just have it start all over next year. Might as well just cut all the, fro uh, the leaves that damaged my cold, you know, just cut them all off and bring it in. And as you can see, all these uh, shoots, come, new shoots coming up, meaning they are going to put out more new leaves and all these leaves will be adequate for the basement. The, um, probably more sunlight efficient for the basement light, amount of light. So it's, that's how plant adapts. You have high intensity light, they put out new leaves for the high intensity lights. If you have a low intensity light, they'll put out new leaves. When you have a, when you move from a low intensity light environment to the higher intensity light environment, those uh, low intensity leaves will get damaged and died off. And then the new leaves will come out and to adapt the environment. That's one thing I love about plants. They adapt as long as you don't abuse it. So it, they, they're pretty well adapt to the environment. Okay, we have a neem tree here. Neem tree is still doing very well. Uh, I'm surprised it hasn't dropped, the, dropped most of its leaves. Most of the time it should be empty now, but I don't know what's going on this year, but it seems like it's doing very well. So it's, leave it as it is. Maybe because the reflectors, uh, reflector sheet's doing a better job this year, but anyway. So I have uh, over there, you see those, uh, these are the uh, white champaga leaves I chopped up. I just put it there, let it dry, and then use it for mulch later on. And these guys, just the uh, cuttings. And then we get over here, we have the, uh, here, let me go to the small one first. That's the Sambidian Sumate. It's doing great, uh, just a little tip from the last time, maybe I will overwater a little bit, it's doing great. And then you have Philonopsis orchid right here, it's doing fine as well. As you can see, the uh, jasmine on the side of Philonopsis orchid is doing well too. And you, see, you can see the new flowers uh, stalks coming out. And this one is even crazier, it's this Philonopsis orchid too. It shoots out two new flower stalks. So yeah, it's gonna put flower out over the winter. It's kind of weird, they're off schedule, but anyway. <laughs> uh, this is the cutting I done long, long time ago. Um, it was pretty long and I cut it in half and planted the other one outside. This one, let me see if you, I don't know if you can look at it. Yeah, there you go, it's a maple. Uh, it's somehow, a, uh, what should I say, it grew outside and got really long and I thought it's just a waste to kill it. So might as well just bring it in and pot it and whatever that thing is, is in there. So I figured just leave it as it is. If any of my friends want to do the bonsai, I'll, or neighbor, I'll give it to them. I typically don't do bonsai. Like I told you guys in many of my videos, I just don't like bonsai. But this one seems to be pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, just treat it as a regular plant here. And then we have over here, uh, Tian Xiang Tai Gut, uh, Sweet Olive, as you can see. That's that the other one is silver olive. Let's not look at silver olive's flower. Uh, right over here, it has a, as you can see, it's wilted a little bit. I think I might have um, overwatered it a little bit, but it's okay. As you can see, the flower, it's it's a lot bigger than the, yeah, let me see, I can zoom it in. A lot bigger than the regular silver olive. But anyway, um, now we have a silver olive over here, which is not a story, it's blooming everywhere. As you can see, one right there, another one right here. There are more up here. As you can see, it's a lot of flowers. And it smells really wonderful in the basement. And there's another flower there. And there are more over here. I don't know if you can see, yeah. It's everywhere, see? 
it's blooming everywhere. So um, this one, it's uh, three years, three or four years old, I think somewhere around in the neighborhood. And these are the new blooms up here too. So if you look down, there are a lot of flowers on the silver olives. Now we come over here, look at the uh, gold olive. So far, it's been doing well. So you can see it's a new growth coming out on from the top. And oh yeah, by the way, just want to let you guys know, so far in my zone, the grass still growing out there. And uh, there hasn't been a snow yet, which is kind of weird. Most of the time around end of October or early November, it's just snowed already. But uh, so far there are no snow, <laughs> no snow days. So it's all good. Huh? So they're doing great. And then over here, we have that uh, Scarlet Sweet Olive. It's doing well on the top, but so far I don't see any blooms. Um, but the bottom leaves tend to fall off a little bit, which it's okay. Um, as long as they're putting out new growth, new shoots. And I found some scale on it the other day. Um, not a big deal. Scrapped them off with the rubbing alcohol and ch check the overall plants. It's doing great. And we have over here, now jump to uh, Sambidian uh, Tianxiang. It's doing very well too. Um, I thought about doing a video last time about uh, slugs. I, very tiny baby slugs I found on the bottom of this pot, which I end up not doing because it's um, it's not worth a whole video just talk about it, but I can talk about it now. Found some baby slugs on the bottom, just wipe it off with the paper, and it's doing well. I mean, it doesn't hurt the plants. So besides last time, there's spider mites on the wood sorrel inside the uh, pots, which I cut them off and uh, kind of got them under control. So as you can see, all the leaves are doing well. Very, these leaves are very pointy, very hard. That's the way they are. That's why they're pest resilient in, in one way, because the most pests don't even want to try to eat these leaves. And we have a cutting over here. I move from the side to up here. That's just uh, jasmine, night blooming jasmine cuttings. And these two are the mints from the front yard. Um, they're getting damaged over the, uh, a little bit, so I figured do a two cuttings. And thing about mints is that uh, they are kind of like figs. They're very easy to propagate. Just cut them and stick them into potting soil. Then give it time, give it some water. It usually will survive. <clears throat> now we move over here to the uh, uh, Chinese perfume tree or you can call it Aglaia odorata. As you can see, it's been blooming nonstop as well, <clears throat> but <clears throat> the fragrance is not strong. Again, this, these flowers <clears throat> are tropical flowers. The more sunlight you give to them, the more heat, the more humidity, man, the fragrance is just outburst everywhere. But now down here, <clears throat> you don't have the heat, but you do have the sunlight. So they still bloom, but not as intense. But you have to put your nose against it you can, in order to smell it. And well, with a sweet olive, it's a different case. It's, uh, you can smell the whole basement, which is very nice. But anyway, uh, over here, we have the Jasmine Mado New Orleans. Uh, like I say, it's half and half with the chili pepper. I did a little pruning on the side to cut them back, um, make it into a more space for both plants. I'm uh, not going to repot them anytime soon, so it's just going to do a little maintenance on that. And then we have these Logan's um, <clears throat> fruits. They haven't fruit yet, but they are, their leaves is growing really big. And you can see if they need more sunlight, these plants tend to grow a lot bigger leaves compared to the leaves in the bottom, which is just from the summer, we put it outside. So sometimes plant indication of how they grow can really show you uh, what kind of environment they in. You can get a message across, to, all right? And then we have this fig over here, which is the same as the uh, fig earlier I t told you about. It's starting to put out, if you look close, starting to put out new shoots. And uh, so that means they're going to probably grow leaves down here. So I cut back the watering on them. Um, that's about it. So, so far, uh, in conclusion, there's a second update on the basement uh, greenhouse. All the plants are doing very well. We encountered some minor pests. Passes and uh, took care of those and get them under control. Again, I want um, just let you know there will always be pests as long as there are plants out there. So it's normal. As long as you take care of it, get under control, they'll still be there, but they won't cause enough damage to harm your plants. All right, I'll see you next time, guys. If you have questions, just leave it a comment below. And thanks for watching, like always.